Hey guys, we're back. I was gonna show you how to set up your document for the tiling texture that we're gonna make. The first thing I wanna do is show you guys how to set up your document size, set up any of your UI elements that you want, and basically just get familiar with the ZBrush interface a bit more. So a few of you may be more intermediate or advanced, and so you can skip this part directly to where we're just going to be importing all of the models into ZBrush and starting our tiling texture. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our document size first. So if you go up here to document, we're going to turn off pro and set the width here to 1024 by 1024 and then you just click resize. It's gonna say you can't undo it and you just click yes and you'll notice if you had a model in there that now it's gonna be the wrong size so you just simply just drag out a new one. Press control N to erase anything that was in your document like if you have a bunch of guys like this push control N and it just removes them all. Then we can go ahead and drag out a tool again and press T. When you push T it'll bring you into edit mode which now we can rotate around the document uh, our Z tool here and sculpt on top of it. Uh, Control Z of course undoes uh, undoes what you did and when you select outside of the model here you can rotate around it like this and if you hold shift and select outside of it, it will snap to different angles that you want it at and center it on the screen so that you can work a lot easier. So say you're working on a flat plane and you can't get it to align quite right, just hold shift and snap it and there you go. Or you want to align to this face right here, just hold shift and it'll align to it and there you go. It's similar to Maya or Max where you hold Alt to move the Z tool around and to zoom in and out, hold Alt, select outside of the object again and let go of Alt and now you can zoom in and out as long as you're holding on the screen. And any time you can press Alt again and you just go back to moving around the object. So it's kind of strange and a little weird to get used to at first, but Actually, it's always weird, <laughs> even when you're used to it. Okay, so now that you have a general idea of moving around the object and snapping the object, etc., you can also frame the object with the F key, just push F, and it'll frame it right directly in the middle of the screen right there. So I'm gonna zoom out a bit and snap it. Okay, another useful tip here. Um, you'll notice earlier when we went to resize the document, if you left Pro selected, it slides both of these sliders at the same time. And that's just to make it easier so that it'll always keep the same resolution and pro or proportion res resolution for you. So say you have like a 1920 by 1080 document, it'll always scale it evenly up and down for you. But since it was not square before and we want to make it square, a nice square document so that when we're creating our tiling texture it will tile properly, that's why we had to turn Pro off and it allowed us to enter manual numbers for each slider here. And that just is necessary for what we're trying to do. So I'll just keep that how it was. Now the next feature we're gonna look into is just simply changing our brushes. So you can select brush right here up at the top left and you can change to all of your brushes from within there. Another quick menu for it and once you get further along in ZBrush using it more often you'll find this is the best way to do it. You just push B and it brings up all your brushes right here and you can isolate 
the brushes by typing in the first letter of the brush you want to select. So say I want to use the standard brush, I'll push B for brushes and S for standard and there it is now. It's isolated with all the S brushes and it's a T. So you push T and now you have your standard brush selected. You'll eventually get those down so that you can really quickly just navigate to whichever brush you want. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and set up our UI so that we can customize the layout of our ZBrush window and the tools that you use most often. You can have quick access to them. It's kind of like a custom toolbar if you use Maya. So we're going to go up here to preferences and you'll select enable customize and you'll notice everything moves now because it's giving you space along the sides here so that you can add all your custom buttons. And you can drag almost anything. So say under deformation you use the mirror option quite a lot. You just hold control alt and you can drag it. Now you can drag it wherever you want it to be. So we'll go ahead and drag mirror right there. Let me try that one more time. Got to make sure it's going to snap properly. We'll drag it at the bottom for now. So just let go and there it is. This is also great if you use brushes a lot and you don't want to keep using that quick menu. Or even materials that you like a lot. You can just uh, set those up by selecting the material you want. Going up here to material and then you'll see this is the one that is active at the top our mat cap. You can't grab this because that'll grab all of the materials, your whole material selector and that's what we already have off to the left here. So we'll go back up and grab the mat cap preview. So control alt and select and drag and there you go. It'll be the same for brushes so if we select the brush that we want to drag first because otherwise if you look up here at the top it only has a default list of brushes and if it doesn't have the one we want, then we can't drag it off. So let's go back into brushes and say, let's use trim dynamic. I use that one a lot. So now we have it selected. We can go back up to brush, hold control alt, and there it is at the bottom. And you can drag that down. You most likely won't want to mix up your materials next to your brushes or you'll get confused which one's which. And if you don't want, something anymore you can just control alt hold control alt and drag it off into the center of the screen and then it's gone so there you go after you've customized your layout and your document how you want this part can be a lot of fun because you can actually go into document here at the top and save this as startup doc and when you do that Basically, all the settings that you have here of the width and the height and anything else that you might have set up for your document will start up with ZBrush every single time. So I can just click Save as Startup Doc. And now whenever you start up ZBrush, uh, this is going to be just your default settings. So you don't have to do that every time you load ZBrush, which is a huge time saver. Uh, secondly, for your UI, after you've taken all this time to nicely set up your UI and lay out all your buttons and sliders just the way you like them, you'll go into Preferences and you can save the UI first of all. So that way you can transfer it to another machine or if you're using it at school or work, wherever you want to. So just save that out and then you can load it right there as well. Uh, just similar to the document, you can also store the config for your UI so that every time ZBrush starts, it will now have this custom layout for you, which is another huge time saver. So there's two great tips that I wanted to just add there that make sure you save all this because otherwise you don't want to lose your document setup and your custom UI setup. If you close ZBrush, it's going to be gone. So definitely do this. <laughs> so that's a good start.
starting point for how you can organize your layout and eventually speed up your workflow with this. In the next section, we're going to start importing our models and actually getting to work on showing how we can create these tiling textures.